Before you buy jeans in the store, the cotton is produced and collected from a field. These materials are brought to the manufacturer where raw cotton is turned into thread that is later dyed to blue and woven into denim. Further down the supply chain, the denim is used to produce the pair of jeans that you buy. Those jeans are stored in a warehouse and brought to the store where you make your purchase. The total supply chain behind your jeans produces 6,000 grams of carbon dioxide equivalent that are emitted into the atmosphere. That might not seem like very much, but the reality is that you are not the only one shopping. There are thousands of people going into stores every day to purchase a pair of jeans. In fact, there are 450 million pairs of jeans sold in the U.S. alone in one year. Jeans are responsible for the addition of 2.7 million metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent into the atmosphere every year. The environmental impact of the denim industry is equivalent to driving 6.5 billion miles or using 303 million gallons of gasoline or driving around the globe over 260,000 times. The world's polar ice caps are shrinking little by little. The Arctic is heating up twice as fast as the rest of the planet, with Greenland's glaciers receding particularly quickly. This process is speeding up all by itself. Melting snow exposes ice underneath, which then absorbs the sun's rays and increases thawing. At the opposite end of the Earth, 90% of the ice shelves on the Antarctic Peninsula are starting to disintegrate. Ice melt is also being observed in mountain ranges like the Himalayas. Layers, Kilimanjaro, the Alps and Pyrenees. In the Andes, glaciers are retreating and risk disappearing altogether. But what will happen when all the ice finally melts? Will the entire planet be flooded? Well, realistically, scientists say the ice won't all melt for upwards of another 5,000 years. But when it does, the Earth will be a very different place than it is now. In total, there are 5 million cubic miles of ice all over Earth. If that were to melt, the first and most noticeable differences would be the levels of water in the sea, which would rise about 216 feet or 66 meters globally. And that insane increase in size causes a lot of huge problems for society. You see, most major cities around the globe are located on the coast of whatever country they are in. This is because it allows for more trade routes and transportation via the ocean. That being said, if the water levels were to rise by a whopping 216 feet, most big cities would be underwater. But a rise in sea levels is only one of many problems that the melting of the world's ice would bring. As a matter of fact, the rise in sea level wouldn't even be their biggest problem. Currently, the ice helps keep the Earth at an average livable temperature of about 61 degrees Fahrenheit or 16 degrees Celsius. It does this by reflecting a lot of the light from the sun back into space. If all the ice were to melt, then it would be open ocean all around the globe, allowing for a drastic increase in temperature. Some estimates say that the average temperature on Earth could get as high as 80 degrees Fahrenheit or about 27 degrees Celsius, and this is where things turn deadly. For comparison, if the Earth's average temperatures were to rise by as little as 5 degrees Fahrenheit globally, then life would forever change as we know it. Super droughts, mass extinction, powerful hurricanes, increased wildfires, famine, and more are all possible side effects. So it almost goes without saying that human life would severely struggle if there were a 20 degree rise in temperature. Of the last five mass extinctions on Earth, four of them were caused by climate change produced from greenhouse gas. 